This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. In this session, we're going to look at how we deal with the sale of a non-current asset. And so we'll use example four. Um, and it says, in the example three, Mel sells the car in September 2004. So if you look back to example three, we were writing up the T accounts for the first three years. Uh, let's open them up again so we can see what happens in the fourth year when we sell it. And so if you check back on the car account, we ended up with a balance of 15,000 at the end of the third year. On accumulated depreciation, at the end of the third year, we ended up with a credit balance of 7,000. Remember, we'd left the balance there because on the balance sheet, we're showing the net of the original cost and the depreciation. And finally, at the end of the third year, the depreciation account, the balance was zero. And we'd move the expense to the income statement. So that's where we were up to. Now, if you look back the last time at example three, we'd bought the car in 2002. So the first year ended June 2002. The second year ended June 2003. The third year ended June 2004. So these are the balances at June 2004. And if you now go to example five, in September 2004, so in the fourth uh, accounting period, it says we sell the car for 6500 And so, these are the balances, remember, at 30th of June 04, or 1st of July. Let's carry on and do the fourth year. Well, the first thing we need to do, surely, we don't actually sell the car until September, so we need to depreciate. So what's the depreciation expense going to be? Well, this fourth year starts on 1st of July, so July, August, September. We've owned it for three months, and so we'll take three twelfths of the yearly charge. And if you look back to example three, uh, the yearly charge for depreciation was 2,800. So the depreciation expense in year four will be 700. Let's put through the entry in the same way as always. Credit accumulated depreciation. Debit the expense account. Seven hundred. No problem. And of course, we won't do it to the end of the year, but on our income statement, we're going to have depreciation expense of seven hundred. However, we've now got to thirtieth September, and we're now told that we sell the car. So let me show you the entries. There are three entries. Watch carefully and learn them. If we've sold the car, the first thing I'm going to have to do is we no longer want this balance of 15000 on the car account. The car's gone. It's disappeared. We need to remove it. And so let's remove this 15000 the cost of the car. To remove it, credit the car account with 15000 and the balance is now zero. The car's disappeared. Obviously, we need a double entry. For that, we open up a new account called a disposal account. And so, credit the car account, debit the disposal account with the original cost of the car. So, the car's now disappeared. In a similar way, though, surely, 
if the car's been removed, we no longer need this accumulated depreciation. There's nothing to deduct it from. And so let's remove the accumulated depreciation. The 7,700 appreciate now. To remove it, debit accumulated depreciation. And the double entry, again, will credit the disposal account. And so, the balance left on accumulated depreciation is zero. The car's disappeared, so too is the depreciation. It's now completely vanished. We've got this disposal account, though. Don't take a balance yet, but there is a balance there of, what, uh, 7,300. And that, surely, is the balance sheet value of the car that we've just removed. However, there's a third entry. The third entry, we're selling the car for 6,500. The double entry when we sell it, debit cash, credit disposal account, 65. So there are three entries. Remove the cost, remove the depreciation, bring in the proceeds. What about the balance left on disposal, though? We have a balance left of... What is it? Zero, zero, twelve, thirteen, eight, seven, one. I think one thousand seven hundred. And what is that seventeen hundred? Surely that's the loss we've made on the sale. We had the car as being worth in our balance sheet a net seven thousand three hundred. I'm sorry, I've got the balance wrong, haven't I? I've added it up wrong. Sorry, 800. Oh. 7, 12, 22. There we are, there we are. The balance is 800. I do apologise. That 800, we had a car effectively worth 7,300. We sold it for only 6,500. That 800 is the loss on sale. And it'll be charged as an expense in the income statement. I'll show you what the income statement would look like in a moment. But the balance on that account is either as here, the loss on sale, or, I think you should realise, had the proceeds been higher, the balance would be on the other side and would be a profit on sale. Finally, for completeness, though, appreciate car, accumulated depreciation has disappeared. Depreciation expense account... Well, the expense for the year, as always, will go to the income statement. Debit income statement, and there we are. And as an extract from our income statement, under the heading expenses, we've actually got two here, have we not? We've got the depreciation expense of 700 We've also got the loss on sale of 800. And of course we'd have all our other expenses, uh, rent, electricity, etc. Now the reason I've shown that last bit is just one thing that's actually quite common. In this example, because we didn't sell the car to September, we depreciated it for a year, a uh, bigger pardon, for three months. Then we dealt with the sale and arrived at a loss of 800. However, read the question carefully because what's very common in real life and in exams is to have a note telling you that our policy is to charge no depreciation. In the year of sale. Now, if it does say that, then obviously you follow instructions. But do see why. It actually makes no difference. You see, don't change yours, but if we'd have been told here no depreciation in the year of sale, we wouldn't have had that 700. 
and so that expense would have disappeared. But what would have happened? When we came to sell the car, all right, remove the car, credit card, debit disposal, as before. Remove the depreciation. But if we hadn't had any this year, the depreciation would only have been 7,000. Disposal, 7,000. Bring in the cash, 6,500. And the missing figure, the loss now, would be how much? 1,500. And what would happen on your income statement? Instead of, as we had, having expense of 700, loss of 800, if, it had, if the, this had been the policy, we'd have had no depreciation expenditure, but the loss would have been 1500. In total, it would be exactly the same, and it's no problem, because this loss, of course, isn't a real loss. The reason it appears is simply that we haven't depreciated enough. So that's extra depreciation. So it doesn't matter at all whether we have two items, depreciation for this year and the loss, or whether we have no depreciation this year and just show a loss. doesn't matter. All right, that's how we deal with the sale. <laughs> We'll have a pause and then deal with the last bit, which is revaluation. Re